<laughs> That's a big hole. I think it's about time we tell you what we're doing. Come on. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. So I thought it'd be best just to start with the why. Like, why are we doing this? Why are we building such a massive looking rec pond? Why are we destroying our beautiful aqua gardens to build the design I came up with? And I'll tell you this, it's because of you guys, because there's so many people out there looking for more contemporary formal designs. And I know there's a ton of people that are looking to take tired old swimming pools, retire them, and turn them into swim ponds, backyard natural habitats that look great year around. I also know the trend out there is contemporary and formal. When I start thinking contemporary and formal, I think right angles. Clean lines, manicured landscapes, more hedges and that kind of stuff, and very, very sleek stonework and everything else. The other inspiration behind all of this is to have something that we've never built before. I've been doing this for 20 some years. Ed's been doing it for almost 30 years. And this is a challenge for us. This is something we don't do on a regular basis. So let me explain a little bit about the design it came up with and how it's gonna sit back in this aqua garden area. So here's what we got. This area right in here is our existing pergola. This used to be the home to the viewing area of a waterfall that came down over in here. Dan's sense wiped all of that out, giving us a giant clean palette to work with. And it's really an enormous space. If we look at the pergola, I wanna have water come right up to the edge in there. And in fact, this area right in here is gonna be a two foot little plunge pool with stairs that lead you down into here. This whole area back in here is gonna be our wetland filter. This side of that is gonna be the swim pond. So this area all the way from here to here is gonna be four feet deep, full of unilock wall stone in here, occasional boulders cut in, some lily pads, of course some jets and filtration and circulation and all that kind of stuff. And then this area is gonna be kind of the icing on the cake. This is our koi window. And if you look really quick that way, the precast concrete wall that's gonna support that koi window, that viewing area. My favorite part of that is I tried to create it and put it at a height that's gonna be more of a swim up bar. So if you're in here, you'll be able to sit like this, kick your feet back behind you, <laughs> and talk to the people on this side of that window, which of course will all be dry. In order to pull that off, we set this countertop at 42 inches high. So on this side, it's four feet of water. A little bit higher over here, it's a comfortable bar height. If you come this way, you're gonna walk down three feet below grade. So you can see I've got some steppers moving through some artificial turf and then some stairs that are gonna take us down into this big sunken patio. This area right here is gonna be more of a island bar, just kind of an area where people can congregate. And then over the top of it is gonna be a pergola that connects the swim pond area with the island bar. More importantly, putting a little bit of shade on that window and the people sitting down here. You know how much fun it is to sit underneath shade, especially in an area that gets full sun all day long. So that was a really important element. If you continue to come this way, you'll walk up some steps and come back into the remaining part of the aqua garden, which sits back behind me over here. If you didn't go straight and you made a left, you'd walk back up some stairs and go to a large deck with large planters put into the deck that cantilevers out over a section of the pond where we can jump from the corner of this into the depths of the swim pond over here. If you don't want to jump in right here, another cool element is this area right here. So I've got some recessed stairs. You'll walk down into about eight, 10 inches of water where we put a couple of those loungy chairs. You know, the chairs that kind of go like this, <laughs> where just your butt gets wet and you kind of sit back and relax. And it will be relaxing because right behind these chairs is a five foot high wall that supports some spillway bowls with water pouring down right behind you. It's gonna look absolutely amazing when we're all done, and then the way we light this thing up, it's gonna look even better. So this is meant to be a year-round place we can hang out, we can come out here in the spring, we can come out here in the summer, the fall. Heck, we've even got this thing set up to run all winter long. And so the rest of this video, or the next series of videos, we're gonna be showing you the step-by-step -step construction and how we put this together and followed the rough blueprint. Hang on guys, this one's gonna be fun, bye.
So one of the most challenging parts about a formal design is all those right angles and everything has to be square. If things aren't square, then it makes everything messed up. We based all of our lines off of this existing pergola. It was the only thing that we're keeping in this area right here. So we ran a line right here that runs parallel with this pergola. This gives us a base to run all of our other measurements off of. The other thing we did is we ran a plumb line that comes off the corner of the pergola there where our post used to be. This gives us a reference point for all of our other measurements. Once we get that line in here, then we can start measuring off. We know we want to create a 12 foot wide pond. So we've got a pond that comes 12 feet from our koi window this way, and it's 20 some feet that way. The other side of it from here over is going to be all of our wetland filters. But we had to make sure we put this window in nice and square. If this window sat opened up a little bit more and didn't come to a perfect right angle back over off of this line over here it would look super weird everything when you're doing these contemporary formal designs should be nice and parallel square even it's got to be exact if you're off two degrees on one wall over 20 feet it's just going to get wider and wider and wider we really want to make sure things stay parallel so we spent a good three four hours putting in stakes transferring measurements all that kind of stuff we we're out here with levels everything else once we got that done then we could properly start digging our hole, which led us to our next obstacle. So as we started digging, especially when we got down into about four feet below grade, we hit an enormous amount of groundwater. So that's what all of these things are here. We're getting groundwater. You can see how mushy this stuff is right in through here. In fact, some of that stuff's even coming up through here because all of this water is seeping up through the ground. So there was enormous amount of water coming through sides of the walls, up through the bottom, and we can't have that because what will happen ultimately is if the water pressure underneath the liner is greater than the water pressure on top, the liner will start bubbling. And this causes major, major problems. And it looks really dumb. So what we did is below the floor of our final excavation, we threw in these trenches. And inside the trenches, we threw in this four inch drain pipe. It's got a sock over the top of it, which helps keep these little slots from getting clogged. I don't know if you guys can see these right in here. This stuff is really important. Then we come back in over the top with a three inch gravel. It's a clean gravel. Now any water that builds up in here is going to fill in through all the space of this gravel. Take the path of least resistance, move this way into this pipe, which then, follow me, goes this way, this way, this way, and add, pretend we're the water right now. So as that water is moving through everything going into this pipe, it continues to go this way, this way, underneath watch underneath our whole raised our sunken patio over here all the way over to a sump pit and inside here we have a sump pump like a lot of you might find in your basement so when the water table gets too high underneath everything the sump pump says let's go on and we'll push that water out to eventually a rainwater harvesting system that will feed my veggie garden <laughs> So these are things that we kind of anticipated back here, but these are really important things because if we didn't take all of these steps now, making sure everything was level, making sure everything was plumb and square, making sure our drainage pipes went in, we'd have a mess of a project later. So the infrastructure that goes into a project like this is much greater than most projects, but it's so, so important. So today we're gonna finish up getting the rest of that gravel in here. Over the top of our three inch gravel, we're gonna do like a half inch gravel. Then we can come in, set our final layer of fabric, and then start getting our rubber liner in here and start building a rec pond.
right, it's day 417 and we're down here still. No, I don't know. It feels like maybe 10 days have been put into this between excavation, all that drainage work that we went over, the gravel that came in. But today's a special day because not only do we have Mr. J Duke back, but we have the people, the main guys at Unilock sitting over here, Bruce and Augie. Now Bruce has been there, I think 18 years. Augie's been there 17 years. The only way I can describe them is kind of like the Ed and Brian of Aquascape. These two are the Bruce and Augie of Unilock. And they are working on a Ucara wall system, which is just this really cool concept. Bruce, right now you're working on a corner area here and you showed me just how this stuff locks in together. I think what's so cool about this is how universal it is. Yeah, so you can use of. all kinds of different stuff. <laughs> yeah. what, the one thing that we were doing is using these panels here to come up with a layout number that works so zero cuts. That's what we're trying to achieve, minimize cutting. All right, so we're in the process of that. But Augie's locked in and he can kind of demonstrate a little bit of that tongue and groove that we're touching yeah. up. Yeah, okay, specifically cool. for come, something like this. This is awesome. <laughs> it's a pretty, pretty cool idea here, right? So you have two different kinds of uh, channels on both sides. One is a outside corner uh, area here. But we have a nice soft interior corner. And anytime you have a nine degree corner or even steps like we do here, we want to make sure we have a mechanical connection here. You know, not only relying on adhesives, but trying to lock something up. So we've kind of designed this so that these actually lock into place here. And now you can see you got a connection block to block there. Uh, and I just rely on adhesive, so pretty cool. Yeah, and this makes it so easy for us to do our stairs now. This is great. So right where we're sitting, this is gonna be the staircase that comes up and out of our sunken patio. If you come over here, Thanks guys, yep. you're welcome. If you come over here, someplace right around in here is this staircase that comes in, and then we have this gorgeous Yukara wall that's gonna hold yep. back all this earth over in here. This is the corner of the pond on this side. So we've started with Unilock, we've gotta start all of this stuff here, we gotta get all of this finished and kinda work our way out of this sunken patio before we can even kinda start tackling the pond. So the fact that these guys are here really simplifying it for us and using their combined 35 years of wisdom is going to make this go super, super smooth. <laughs> much left to do in this well no I take that back we have so much more to do but instead of me continuing to talk just about our sunken patio I think we'll just show this on a kind of time-lapse area you can see we've got this starting to go in it's looking awesome this Yukara stuff is just so cool in the way you can hang the panels on there it fits together so easy and we don't have to do a whole lot of cuts which is just fantastic we've got this area dug out right here we're gonna drop in a big boulder because that's what we do here at Aquascape especially team Aquascape Escape at the pond professor, Greg Woodstock, the pond guy. We're good with boulders. So we're gonna drop a big boulder in. You and that guys are gonna come in and cut that to fit around there, but we wanna add a little bit of our element in here as well. So we've got this big old boulder over here. There's Ed. Oh, look at him. So in his element. <laughs> Ed, what would you guess this rock weighs? Holy cow. 8,000, 9,000 pounds? Yeah, it's a, it's it, a big it's a big boy. Yeah. It's, it's about 42 inches tall, 40 some inches wide, by 30 some inches wide. So it's a big boy. And this is the smaller of the ones we got. So this thing is just going to be awesome. The reason we picked this one, because of the flat edges, it'll be really easy or easier for Bruce and the guys from Unilock to cut their pavers to fit around this stuff. All right. Notice when we get the straps, we try to get them close to the edge. That allows us to pull them off a little easier. We never want to strap right through the center because getting that strap out would just suck. <laughs> That's not even the big boy. No, it's got like a weird edge right here. I don't know if we need to move it or not. Can we strap it the other way? And our strap's not long enough. I can get another long strap.
<laughs> Ed the Pond Professor. Ed and I have done countless jobs, literally countless oh. jobs. Oh. Today. Countless jobs together, oh. and this one, we've not done something like this ever together though. Ever. This is a very formal rec pond, and we are at the point where we're just about ready for fabric and liner. Which I have been waiting for for like a <laughs> month. <laughs> Literally a month. <laughs> so Ed and I just spent the last, I don't know, half hour kind of laying these areas out. So you see all these orange lines running all over the place. This area right here, we're gonna drop a giant boulder, and the post from the pergola is gonna come right here, rest on this boulder. This area, this little square where Jay's standing in in our clay compactor is more, what are we calling this, like the swim cove? Yeah, swim cove. It's a good name. Yeah. Aqua, aqua swim cove. <laughs> little area, two feet deep. We kind of go back and forth on it. It should be two feet deep, 18 inches. The suspense has got to be killing you guys, right? But you'll see at some point what we decide on. But anyways, a little shallow area to come in. And then everything from this area this way is all going to be wetland. So we're laying out all these lines because if we don't get everything straight, there's no way this pond's gonna look good. If this line was off three degrees, it's gonna look really silly down over there. So we gotta get this nice and square and everything else. After that, then what we have to come in, Ed, and we wanna bring in like some stone chips, right? Yeah, exactly. So we'll come in with like an inch, inch and a half of stone chip. Well, actually on this side here, probably four to six inches yep. to create that trough. So we're gonna come in a little higher right here with the stone chips. Then we come with our liner over the top of the fabric. It'll dip down like so, and that trench gives us kind of a a footing, if you will, for our Sienna brick to sit so those in here. Big base plates. Those big, oh, those big base, base plates. Big first. base plates, then the Sienna on top of it. So we want to create a nice level base on top of the liner after that. Yeah. I think it's going to make a whole lot more sense when we get that fabric and liner in here. So you guys just hold on tight. Next step is fabric liner. first boulder going into the pond and I know it's a formal pond but we can't help ourselves because we have these 12,000 and 15,000 pound rocks this one is actually weighed in at 13.5 and we want to use it to support our pergola right here so the six inch post that'll come down from there will get accepted by that giant rock out there so let's see if we can't get this thing in here and yeah make magic just make magic all right, we got them down in here. Now it's swinging in. Woo-wee! So I don't know if you guys can see this, but the rock is actually tapered this side to this side. So the higher part will sit where this post is coming down. And then we're gonna taper towards that window. So when looking through the window, we get to see a little bit more interest than just Unilock Wallstone. Not that the Unilock Wallstone isn't the most beautiful stuff in the world, but we like our boulders and we're still pond guys at the end of the day. So let's just set this up and we'll see if we can't film this just kind of coming in. That was exciting. I bet you can't wait to see what that looks like, especially all set and the other pavers and stuff locked around it. If you want to see how that boulder looks and the progression of this pond, especially with all the cuts and everything else that we're going to do, you make sure you tune into the next episode where we continue to build this epic dream pond. Wreck, dream, wreck, epic dream wreck pond. You guys know what I'm saying. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell all your friends. Love you. Bye.